Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second video for Forest Back Pro. We are going to continue explaining and building up on the skills that we picked up in the first video, which was the very introduction, uh, introductory video for Forest Back Pro aimed at total beginners. So if this is the first time you're picking up Forest Back Pro and you're not really sure what to do, I would advise you go and check out the first video. I will leave a link. And now let's continue on building up on the skills that we picked up in the first one. So for this one, I want to show you guys an actual example of what can be used for a topic on Forest Pack Pro. Now, I actually got this as a request from one of the readers. Basically, he wanted to know how he can model a painting that is basically like this. So this is not a painting per se, because it's basically screws that have been screwed in for a certain amount into a surface, which uh, later on, it actually gives off a 3D look or 3D image to the surface. Very interesting kind of art. I've seen uh, this kind of art uh, done with uh, hammer and nails, uh, with screws and all different matters of metals. So I want to go ahead and show you how we can get some uh, result like this by using Forest Pack Pro. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to select an image that we want to use as our, um, well, as our base. For me, I went over on uh, Google, I searched for a few black and white images, I just needed something simple, and ho and behold, I found this image. This is the uh, United Kingdom Queen. She's so old, she probably knew Jesus, so I'm pretty much sure that everybody has seen her at some point in their life, so they can recognize her. All right, so getting to the side, let's, uh, let's try and make an image of the Queen in 3D by help of Forest Pack Pro. So the first thing we need, we're gonna need is we're gonna need a plane on which we can, uh, well, on which we can make the actual geometry. So uh, what I'm going to do is, for example, if you, uh, if I open up the image over here, you're going to see that the dimensions are 2000 by 1000. So all I got to do is make something that would be down those lines. So here, if I since I'm using centimeters, if I go 2000 by 1000, it's going to be a bit big, but eh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Also, what I can do is I can make it 100 by 200. So all, as you can see, I just need to make sure that, well, my aspect is not wrong. I just need to retain the aspect of the image. So when I apply it to my plane, it won't, it won't get squished or stretched. So I'm gonna open up my Oh, let's just open it up here. I'm going to put up my material editor and drag in the queen in the diffuse slot. Let's show it up and see if everything is fine. All right, as we can see now, we have the image of the queen. And that is great. So now we have the base. The next thing that we will need will be the geometry that we want to scatter on the surface. For this, I will need, uh, I'll need to make one uh, simple nail, which is a very easy thing to do. All you need is a cylinder. Let's just make it so it's not so hu humongous. So let's give it a half a rate a centimeter. Uh, ten should. Oops. Or 0 0.5. Yeah, this is gonna work. Okay, awesome. Just a quick, all right, modeling. We're gonna go with Swift loop. Add in one loop over here, one at the bottom. And the reason for adding these loops is so that I can uh, ring this, convert it to a polygon, and then extrude it. 
make sure it's a local normal give it some width there we go we got the head for our nail select the top portion here since we don't need it like this we're going to collapse it and we're going to do the same thing with the bottom again collapse and there we go we have a very simple nail let's collapse this okay awesome this works just fine I'll bite it actually might be a bit too big so I'm gonna scale it down skew it up a bit so it's a bit taller well in all honesty just just make sure that the size fits the image all right so once we have this i'm gonna go over and from the reset x form i'm going to reset the x form because i scaled it i don't want to get any uh, issues down the road with it all right so we have two things we have the base on which we want to scatter and we have the geometry that we want to be scattered so now what we're going to do is go over in the create panel from the center primitives choose i2 software and click on forest pack pro and click on the plane again it's going to add one uh, single huge plane on it then go into the modify and like you saw in the first video what we need to do is define what geometry is going to be scattered which can be done by clicking on the geometry tab and then click in custom object click on none so you can specify which object is going to be scattered click on the nail and right away that nail is supposed to be scattered on the surface uh, in this case i can only see one so i'm guessing that the problem that we are having right now is with the distribution which is the next place where we are going so i'm going to uh, collapse the geometry and open up the distribution map now for here what we need to do is first of all i'm going to change the spread distribution map from spread to either dense or better yet i'm going to change it to full full should give me a much more coverage of the surface now the interesting part is that uh, this distribution map works in the manner because wherever it's uh, where it says white is going to put in one of the geometry where it sees black is going to uh, well not put any geometry in there so now the problem here is even though it's white we only see two of these nails now the reason for this is the density by default this is at 10,000 if I reduce it down to 1,000 you're gonna see a lot more of these uh, nails now since uh, we want to have even more I'm gonna try and reduce this to 500 and see how that fares and since we got too many on the screen in order to retain some more well screen responsiveness what forest pack pro does is in the display it's going to change it from mesh to adaptive which is going to uh, take all of these um, elements that we have and change them with actual planes but since i want to see how this thing is going to look i'm going to change it back to mesh i'm going to sacrifice some of the uh, speed that i can see in my viewport and it's not stuttering so no problems for now all right back to distribution map uh, you can see that even 500 is too sparse so i need to get even lower so let's try something with like 250 they should double the number awesome all right we are getting somewhere we can probably even go a tiny bit lower let's see with 200 yeah that this this is just fine great all right so once i have this i can basically try and see how my render can uh, is gonna look like i will need to do a few things before i uh, put a render on since i'm using v-ray i will need to put in one light in the scene so i'm going to use a v-ray light i want to use the sun so put it on the, from the side it's going to ask me if I want to add a V-Ray environment map. Yes, why not? 
raise it up. Okay, awesome, that works. That's just fine. And I'm gonna press uh, Shift L so it can hide the, the lights. All right, this works. Let's try and put a uh, test render on, see how that thing fares. All right, one of the things I actually did uh, remember is that whenever you're using V-Ray uh, lights or V-Ray for a rendering engine, your, uh, your screen or your uh, image is gonna get overblown if you're not using a V-Ray camera or if you don't have uh, well, let's just see where was it. Okay, here it is. In the environment, or just by pressing the eight on, on your keyboard, you need to change the exposure control. So from here, I'm going to use V-Ray exposure control mainly because I don't want to ha actually have to add in uh, more, or a ca I don't want to add a camera V-Ray. I just want uh, want to be able to move around. My image. So the only thing that I'm changing is the shutter speed and the neutral white balance. I'm gonna change anything else. Change this to shaded. And now when I render, I should get a decent result, or at least decent for preview purposes. Right? Let's go. As soon as the render is finished, I can see that I actually have my original image covered with the nails. Now what I probably should have done in the beginning is change the color of all these nails because I really don't like them being green. So I'm gonna put them in something like dark. All right, this, this works better. All right, now the actual problem that we have here is not the color, but it's the height. Now the way that this kind of art works is that the height of the nails is pretty much going to define the contour of the art. So the way to do this with uh, using our Forest Pack Pro is you're going to go back to Modify. And now I'm going to uh, close down the distribution map because I don't want to change anything else here. I'm happy with distribution. I'm going to uh, switch down to Transform. All right, now. As you saw in the first video, if you watched it, Transform has three options. The first one is the translation, which is going to move our geometry left or right. As you can see, it kind of changes it, but that is not the, well, the look that we are going after. The second one is the rotation, which again, is not what we are looking for because we don't want to have our nails be crooked. What we are looking for is the actual scale. So if I enable this, I'm gonna see that the all the nails that I have here are randomly either uh, taller or shorter. Now this is basically because we have um, enabled this on a random scale. So if I want to make the nails go in or out, I have to control them somehow. And that somehow is, uh, instead of using it uh, with the regular uh, random number, I can use an actual map. So if I click this, then this is going to be controlled by a bitmap. Here, I can define the bitmap. So if I click here and choose a bitmap, all right, let's go standard bitmap. I'm gonna close this and from here, I'm gonna actually take this image, drag it outward to this empty spot, put it there. Now click this and put it here. Make it an instance and now if you take a look from the sides, you're gonna notice something. Some of these nails are a bit on the inner side, while some are taller. Now we can further emphasize this by uh, controlling this 
over here, this field. These fields are basically going to control how big or how small a certain um, certain geometry or a piece of geometry is going to be in a given axis. Now, for by default, this is set up at 80 by 120 on the x axis. So if I reduce this to let's say something like 10 and leave the other ones at 120, which is going to make it so one of uh, one of these or depending on the color of the underlying um, bitmap, some of those are going to be smaller, like 10% of the original uh, size, while the rest are going to be at 120%. But let's take a look at another thing that we want to change before we do this. We want to change the axes on which this is uh, happening, because if you take a look at the really small pieces over here, you're going to notice that, well, actually, they have been squished in, um, into, well, into itself. So they have been made smaller. What we want to do is we want, to, we want them to retain their uh, size. But for, uh, in order to do that, we just want them to be in the uh, Z axis or the height axis. So I'm going to turn off this map here, and I'm going to lock, uh, click here where it says lock aspect ratio. I'm going to click on none, and now what I want to do here is I'm going to put this to 100 by 100 because I don't want to change it in the X or Y, but for the Z axis, I'm going to put it one to this one to 10, and this one let's give it a uh, it can stay at 100. So now, if we take a look at all of these nails, you're going to see that all of them have retained their original size. The only thing that's changed is the height, which is what we want for this kind of an image. And now, if we turn on the map here, it's going to take all of its data from the map that we have here. So if we take a look at from the side, we can see that a lot of these nails are now embedded deeper while some are left uh, standing taller and all of that is controlled by the underlying texture so now let's uh, let's try and render out an image and see how this thing looks like as it is right now I'm going to put it from around here so it's closer and let's see how this thing is going to look like a render all right, so definitely this was the wrong angle to do this because I just made the queen look like the clown from Spawn. Uh, but you get the idea because you can see that all of those uh, nails that are in places where it's black, they have been uh, nailed in uh, tighter. Um, the grays are tied in, or at least they're uh, in a bit less while all of the white pieces are actually left at 100% or they haven't been stuck into inside the, the surface. So what we can do here is if we are not happy with a result like this, we can invert it. So uh, that's a very easy thing to do as well. All you got is open up in the material editor where you have your uh, image. Just scroll down where it says the uh, output and invert the output. As soon as you do that, it's going to take an inverted and this in this case we should get a different uh, type of a result and for this I'm actually going to rotate my image I don't want it to lie, 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 lay low flat on the ground so I'm going to move it upwards a tiny bit like this all right let now let's see how this thing would look now All right, render. And I can see that I got an, a rather interesting result here as pretty much this is how this kind of an art is made. So again, I can go ahead and turn off the base here. So I'm not actually seeing uh, the image and this would probably be how this would be used 
let's just go white this is how we used in the art so you have a white canvas with the nails defining the form so let's see it one more time and there we go so if i check my force back pro what is important to pick up from uh, this lesson is that whenever you're going to be using the transforms you need to remember that it doesn't always have to be random by clicking on the little squares next to the map you can actually control how that certain transform is going to behave for example you just saw here how the scale behaved uh, with the the well the bitmap that I chose but you can actually use this same thing for the rotation and the translation so by controlling all those uh, things you can get a plethora of different and pretty much fun effects happening all around all right so i would like to wrap it up here for this video and i hope you guys had fun and you learned something new if you have any questions leave them below and i'll meet you all in the comment section of the video if you enjoyed this video then please click the like button and if you're not subscribed now is a great time to do so so as always thank you very much for watching this video and i will see you all next time right here